Hey Connorsville, uh, here we are, we're back again another month, they let me on again. Uh, this month we've got Donald Worley, he's going to talk about Bigfoot, Sasquatch, whatever you want to call the animal. Also we've got the boys at the rodeo, they're going to ride some bulls, and also we've got another piece of the Humane Society, and at the end of that one I'm going to give you a chance, I don't care who you are, we're going to give you a chance to get on next month's show. Hi, welcome to Connorsville hometown, uh, we're going to do a segment tonight on bull riding. We're in Millville, Ohio at the Hanging Tree Ranch uh, Bull Riding Productions. We've got some local kids going to do some bull riding tonight. You might know some of them. Uh, we've got Devin Farmer. He's a freshman at Connorsville High School. He's 16 years old. Oh, excuse me, he's 15 years old. Uh, we've got uh, Clint Reiser. He's age 16. He's a freshman at Connorsville. Uh, we've got Matt Caldwell. He's age 15. He's a sophomore at Connorsville High School. And we've also got John Gray. He's age 16. He's a sophomore at Connorsville. And we've got one more boy. That'd be David Dorfline. He's age 17, and uh, he's a sophomore at Brookville. Uh, he's a buddy of the guys from Connorsville. They're hanging out. That's why I'm covering him. So uh, hang around. This is going to be a good segment. You don't know what you're going to see. So uh, we'll be back in just a minute with some bull riding. following down here, uh, David Dorfline. He's a 17-year-old sophomore at Brookville High School. He's a buddy of the guys from Connorsville ride. Um, they look good out there. Yeah. How long have you been riding? I've been riding a year and a half. A year and a half. Uh, anywhere else besides here? Any radios I can find. Any place you can find. That's cool. All right, man. Well, I'm going to try and get the other guys here so because we're running out of time. And uh, I want to thank David here. Uh, he had a good ride. Uh, keep watching. We'll be back with another one of the bull riders. Okay, here we go. I got another one of the guys here real quick. Got Clint Reiser. Uh, he's 16 years old, uh, freshman at uh, Connorsville High School. Uh, just started this three months ago, he said. What did you think about your ride tonight? Uh, I thought I looked pretty good, but when the bull spun around, I lost hold with my left spur and come off of it. Are you having a good time doing it? Yeah, I was having a blast. Okay, that's all indeed. All right, man. We'll go try to find. I think I got one more bull rider, and uh, we'll be back. Thanks, Clint. Hey, hey. He's a 15-year-old sophomore at Connorsville High School. Uh, Matt, how long have you been riding? For about a year. About a year. You ride anyplace else besides here? The Indiana High School Rodeo Association. Where else, where around are you riding at? Uh, around Salina, Ohio, Waynesville. Just all around the local rodeos. Okay, here I got another one of the guys. Uh, this is a new one. He's only been riding a month, he says. Uh, John Gray's his name. He's 16. He's a sophomore at Connorsville High School. Uh, you nervous? Uh, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Are you, how many times have you rode? Uh, probably about nine. Nine times? Yeah. Still nervous as you were the first time? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. All right, man. Well, I'm going to let him go. They're calling for all the practice riders to come up there, and I uh, want to introduce him, so thank you, man. Yep. See ya. He's Devin Farmer. He's 15. He's a freshman from Connorsville. He's not going to ride tonight. He rode last week and he kind of tweaked his back a little bit, so he's going to have to take it easy this week. But uh, you say you've rode, what, four times, Devin? Yeah. I asked a guy earlier, the new guy, if he gets nervous. You nervous when you get up there? Yeah, once you get back there in the shoots, you get pretty nervous. So. Scary or just nervous? Both? It's not really scary. It's more nervous than anything. Is it? Having yeah. fun, though? Yeah, it's pretty fun. Cool. That's what we like. All right, that's the last guy. Uh, we're going to finish up watching these guys ride, and then I'll close up the segment here a little bit, so uh, hang around for a few seconds. We'll be back. Riding segment of this show. Kids, 80 pounds or under, and eight years old, or less. Uh, we got a couple kids from Connorsville riding. My son, Alexander, and Chandler Creech, he's going to be riding. So I'm going to go over here. Alexander's almost up. I want to get this on. This will be good stuff, so hang out and watch this. This is pretty cool.
I hope you enjoyed the bull riding. Uh, I saw some good stuff, some guys getting chased around. It was fun. You've got to be pretty tough to do this stuff. I want to real fast, I want to thank um, it's Rich and Pat Spreckelmeyer. They're the owners of the Hanging Tree Ranch here. Matter of fact, I didn't realize until I got over here that um, Pat Spreckelmeyer used to be a Connorville resident. She said she grew up there. Uh, I think her maiden name, she said, was Judd. Uh, if you guys feel like it there in town, if anybody's got the spine, they want to come over here and ride a bull, anybody's welcome to come over here. I think it costs you 15 bucks. You get in the uh, practice round. 8 o'clock, Friday nights. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you some directions here. So if anybody wants to come over, uh, if you take 252 East out of Brookville, take, uh, you're on that, uh, you take get to 129 East for about 11 miles, and then left on Cochran, and about three quarters of a mile down on Cochran, and it's on the left-hand side. It's a big uh, barn here. You'll see HT on the front, Hanging Tree Ranch. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is one of our first segments, kind of rough, but we made it through it. So if you want to ride a bull, come on over. Okay, Connorsville, here we are. We're back at the uh, Fayette County Humane Society. I got Lisa and Jeanette with me. Uh, we got a bunch of dogs. They told me last month they had 28 adoptions. Is that a pretty good month for you? Mm -hmm. Real good. Good, good. Uh, first, she's got a few featured dogs, and then we're going to look at all the pups we've got. Um, first one over here, Lisa. This is Sahara Jack. We've had him about nine months now. He's a neutered uh, chow husky mix. He has had some obedience training. He was found out on Waterloo. Somebody had dumped him and left a bowl for him, but we've picked him up and brought him in here. He's a real good dog. He needs to be in a fenced yard or a good country home, but he'd make somebody an excellent pet. Good. Anything he needs else? a home. He's been with us a long, long time. time. Long time. It's hard to get rid of the older, bigger yeah. dogs, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, somebody out there but he's needs a great to help. Dog. Good. Jeanette, who have you got? I have Lucy. A female mix chow. She's spayed. Uh, I've had her about two months. She's been with the Humane Society about four months though. Yeah. She was found uh, out running around by uh, Fuzzy Lakes. Uh, she's a real good dog. She just needs a good home, farm she, home. She ran around all summer last year. We couldn't catch her. She was living in a cornfield and she had pups somewhere out there which we never found the pups. But Hmm. Since then, we've spayed her, and she's come a long ways. Good. Uh, we got a few more pups over here. We got a few ladies helping us out, holding a few of them. Uh, matter of fact, I think this little black one. There's three of them. Can't tell them apart. They're all cute. Uh, Myron, get a shot of all the little dogs around here. We don't have all the kids like we did last time, but we got the dogs. Sit. Sit How's your cat adoption's been going? Great. We're down to one cat right now. One cat. Good. But it'll soon be full. <laughs> it'll soon be full. They went quick. Kitten Marcus season's telling. starting, so. Yeah, good. Okay, uh, need to get in here, get you a dog. Look, kids are going to love it. My kids, matter of fact, let's get a shot of one that I'm going to take home with me back here behind Lisa. Here another month or so, I'm going to get uh, some fencing put up, and this St. Bernard's going to go home. Uh, I've already taken care of that one. Also, before we end this, um, $50 donation. First person come in after they see this show, I'm going to match their 50 bucks. And to goose the deal a little bit, that first person, uh, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, got a kid that's talented, they can sing, they can dance, that first $50 donation, I'm going to put them on next month's show. So you come in, Lisa said she'd be more than happy to take your name and your address, uh, phone number for me. I'll get a hold of you. So even if you don't have any talent and you just want to be on the show and look goofy, give us a call and uh, we'll take care of it. So Lisa, thank you. Okay. Appreciate well, you it. Want the phone number? Yeah, we better do that real quick. We need the address and the phone number for those people that don't know where we're at. The phone number is 825-0921. We'll be here from 8 till 3, Monday through Friday. And it's at 2204 Grand Avenue. It's in the professional pet grooming shop. Thanks. We'll see you later. Thank okay, you. Okay, Connorsville. Here we are. We're back. Another segment. Uh, you're going to like this one. We're going to start talking about uh, Bigfoot, Sasquatch. So we got a lot of information to cover. I want to introduce you to Donald Worley. How are you doing, Donald? Um, your background. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been in, uh, in, in investigation and research for uh, uh, 37 years. 
so I, will, I surely will quote some of what I'm long, talking about. Long time. And uh, uh, this here, I'm, I'm primarily in uh, abduction research and uh, the uh, Nordic type <coughs> entities. But uh, I, I was in this in the 80s, the early 80s, for a couple years is when I got this stuff. Uh, it, it is it is part of the UFO mystery. Okay, that, that's another thing. We've got a little twist on this. Uh, at the end of the segment, Mr. Worley's got his own theory on this, and it's really hard to prove him wrong. So, uh, your articles, you've told me you've wrote for magazines, papers, uh, you've done a lecture that you're really proud of. You said, uh, who was that with? Oh, that wasn't a lecture. Yeah, it was a lecture. A paper that I gave uh, when Dr. Heinix, the official Air Force consultant to UFOs, invited me to go to Evans, Illinois, and give my paper on these ape-like identities, or these uh, para-apes, I call them, because they're not really really flesh and blood, you know. And uh, well, I've got, the, here it is right here. This is my, you know, and it, I, I, I uh, studied 10 different categories of, of uh, 600 and different, 600 and some different people. Do you plan on putting this on your website? Uh, I've got a lot of other stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, I can put but, on my website. But eventually you're gonna put that on. Yeah, let's real quick, let's take a look at this. Um, Mr. Worley has a website here, www.abduction.com slash Worley. Uh, check it out. Gonna be some pretty cool stuff on there. You might learn some stuff. Um, yeah, because we can't cover much of it here. Yeah, we've got a lot to cover. Um, were you interested in these things when you were a kid growing up? Uh, no, uh, I was in error, error first, UFOs, you know. Yeah. And uh, then I found out these things were part of it, so mm -hmm. then I got, I went down that side avenue and yeah. explored that. <coughs> what got you started originally in the UFO abduction and those type of things? I don't know, maybe it's just in my blood. I'm an English ancestor. My ancestors come out of the woods near Somerset, England, and I, maybe I got Sherlock Holmes in me. I just, <laughs> just always like to try to find out what the heck is going things. on. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there really interested in these things. I'll tell you what, let's get up here. Um, we've got some stuff that uh, Mr. Worley's brought. He's got some casts, some footprints here. Uh, we've got some dust that he's brought back from Mount St. Helens. Actually, that's where these casts came from. A man that he knows uh, did the casts for you, correct? Yeah. Yeah, okay. How long have you had these? Uh, that's it. See, I'm older now and I forget the dates. But <laughs> in the 80s, when I was Somewhere out the there, man, my wife visited, uh, we went to her brother lived in Oregon. And we were going to make a western trip anyway, and I knew this guy. He's what, uh, so uh, we went to, to her brother in Oregon, and I went was headed for Washington State, where my first wife's folks were. And on the, in the way was or southern Washington, where I stopped to spend a day with this guy with, that had made a, got all these. So he actually did these himself. Yeah, he did these. The way he got these was he bowed those roads in for the Weyerhaeuser Timber Company. And uh, all the cutters knew him, and they knew he was interested in this, so they would put a yellow ribbon where they found some of these tracks in the in the uh, damp dust of the after they blew up, you know, mm -hmm. the mountain. Were real nice to get nice footprints, and that's how he poured these, you know. Yeah. And uh, he he would go fly up in a helicopter and get them. Okay. I'll tell you what. Let's go down here. Uh, let's take a look. First thing he did bring in for us, um, we've got a picture of Mount St. Helen. Yeah. Before and after. Before and after. Before and after. I don't want to be there after. Um, he's even got some dust. Yeah. And or ash, I guess you would call it. we are still got the dust. See it? On my hand. Hmm. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's get into these casts right here. Well, what do we got here? That is a, a baby book Bigfoot. They, they have a family, which can, kind of confuses me in a way, because yeah. from the way the eastern Bigfoot are, it don't seem like they have a family, but uh -huh. uh, anyway, they do have families, and uh, that's a baby that jumped in a sandbar. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, that's I see what's going on. Yeah. And, uh, uh, five toes, but a lot of them in the back east here are uh, three toed Really? Mm -hmm. And these out west are more. Why do you think there's a the more settled the, in? They're more. Uh, why do you think the difference is between the three and five toe? Between the what? Why? Why is there a difference between between the three and the five? Just don't know. Just one of those things. A lot of answers I don't know. Just one of those things. How big of an animal 
would you think that would be? Oh, he was maybe he was five or six foot tall. What kind of weight do you think? 200, 300 pounds? No, he wouldn't. Here, here it's a big one. Here. There's a big Okay, well, let's, okay, well, let's, let's go ahead and get 400 pounds. Let's hold this up. Mr. Worley, hold yours up there. Yeah, I wanted to just have a look at the uh, ridges. I don't oh, okay. know whether that ridges are caused by the casting it, or I'd like to find out sometime hmm. why that's that way. And what, approximately, how big? They're, they're flat footed, you see. And uh, somebody told me, said, well, no wonder they're flat footed with all that weight. Broke, their arches broke down. This right? would be a big animal here, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a it's, big animal. What do, you, what do you figure? Oh, I'd say maybe he, he goes up to 12 foot or, or 10 better, foot. Or, somewhere in there. You know. Probably, what, four, five, six hundred pounds? Yeah. It's a big animal. Some of them back here in Indiana have been huge. Uh, the kind that vanish, you know. Yeah. Now, we have some other ones here. Now, these, you say, came from a female, probably. Yeah. Is that what you've got here? Just, these, that's what he told me. I wrote on him about yeah. female. The, the males are always big. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. These are all. Yeah. They're all big. I don't want to run into any of them. Uh, what we got here with the rocks? Yeah. These roll in the mountain streams. They're rock, volcanic rock, and the streams catches them and, turn, you know, it, it just keeps rolling them like down. that. Yeah. And one time they say that Bigfoot threw one of these at people in cars. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't want to throw that at you either. Okay, I'll tell you what. We've got those. Let's hold up a couple of these, and this is your uh, drawing of what you say they look like in this part of the country, right? Yeah. With the red eyes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And you say there's a difference between these and the ones in the West? Some difference, but I think they're the same source and the same things. Okay. I think they're all in the same. Just like us, though, everybody, some people have blue eyes and some have brown. Yeah, okay, that we buy basically the same thing that's going on. Okay, here we've got um, a couple other drawings of yeah. an Indiana pair eight that's been mm -hmm. a drawing of what they've seen in Indiana. Mm -hmm. And here's a, a picture of one that was in Ohio. That was in Ohio. That gives you an idea that yeah. how large it was. This was really a famous case here over in Ohio. It was. Oh, they poured a lot of lead at that one. They did. Yeah. Didn't take it down, huh? These big tank size UFO would be holding over the water wood line yeah. and project these light beams down and these would appear in the, in the, on the ground in them. Mm -hmm. and, and these farmers barricaded their, with, with the point, with ivy, I mean with the barbed wire and got up on the roof and they would blast away at them. One time they shot, some come close to the barn and they even tried to talk to them saying now if you don't talk or do something we're going to shoot on you and they did. They, they unloaded what they call them uh, poking, poking bullets. I don't know what kind of those were, but, yeah. but they was powerful. And shot them, and they just screamed and run off. Mm -hmm. And then the next morning, they went out there, and all they could see holes in the ground. Well, I see here, you gave me some information. I looked through here, and there's probably, oh, I don't know, what, 50, 60 no, there there's instances? Uh, about 30-some. Well, of the shootings here? OK. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they've not been able to take one down, I see at all. I'll tell you what, before we go any further with that, of why, um, let's get into some of the local sightings, um, and then we'll get into the gunshots and why we haven't captured one, why you can't uh, kill one. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. here we go. We've got a map of Indiana, Mr. Worley's made up, of all the uh, sightings that have been, mm -hmm. and how many, past how many years have these all happened? Uh, it's, it's over the last 30 years, maybe. Last 30 years, yeah. all these have happened. Just these, these are early from there. Uh, down in this section here, there's a lot more down there than what I've written on there. Mm -hmm. and, and see, I've told you about the gunfire there. Yeah. Now, we, we want to talk right here about No Town, because okay. it's close, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's okay. right on top of us. Jim Caldwell and his deputies investigated that. I went down there, and this uh, lady that this happened to, well, she's an abductee. A lot of times, sometimes the abductee will be ones that these apes come back to. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. But anyway, uh, they don't, it's another one of them things you, you wonder why, what, what's going on? Anyway, this one came to her back door and she, and she shot it. It wasn't more than 12 foot away. And of course, it frightened her a lot. She came out her back door and here it come. And she shot it with a 38 revolver. This is what Jim Caldwell told me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, it, uh, 
she shot it and it stood there with six or eight shots and it just looked at her. This is the story that she gave to Sheriff Caldwell at the time. Yeah. So he's... I don't know why she would want to tell a fantastic story. Okay, so story he's relaying to you what she has said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and then when she ran in the house and when she looked back out, it was gone. Mm -hmm. So... Well, uh, that, that's when we get into your theory here in a few minutes of why yeah. it was gone. Um, your other local sites, what, what else have you got here? Blue Cray Springs is, it was a good one. I don't know too much about that because it was in the Richmond item quite a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. But it had happened and they blasted away with a high-powered rifle and shotgun at this thing. Apparently the, some of these things come back more than once, then people's getting ready for them, you know. Yeah. And uh, it didn't bother this thing either. I think this one here just went like that, like you're spotting it a fly. Sometimes they flinch a little bit. Yeah when it goes through them, but it don't bother them any. Okay. Uh, and I see, let me go down to Rising Sun. That was, that was a pretty good one. Uh, there, uh, this thing uh, came up and in there in the car, and it tried to get in the car and pushed the car, and then uh, finally they got away from it, and it was, they seen it over there on a hill some distance from them, and they shot, I think it was 22 rifle shots at it and it crawled off, crawled away. Sometimes they'll scream and run away, and sometimes, you know, they don't, they don't, don't put them down, though. Yeah. You know? and, uh, let me go to Sharpsville. That was a good one. Uh, I investigated that one, and uh, he, when he was out after this happened, it came back two straight years, and when, whenever he uh, was out once, Looking around, he was rabbit hunting. He found this big swirl, swirl circle that you hear about sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Clockwise, foliage down, and, and this thing came back. He came home one night, and this thing had tried to get in the, into the uh, cabin, the house, and trailer, and uh, it put, tore the, the window off some the uh, siding part, mm -hmm. but it didn't get in. And uh, what do you think their intent was? Huh? What do you think its intent was? Was it trying to get to him or? Food, shelter. They like food. Yeah, that's what it there was. was a guy down in Texas that this thing lifted him in sleeping bag and all, and it must have smelled this barbecue sack of barbecue. It dropped him, went picked that up, and goo wolfed it down and walked off. Took off after you got the food. But let me let me be sure and add now that I want the listener to understand that uh, the viewer to understand that uh, we don't know if these things have ever killed anybody, mm -hmm. and uh, they actually. They're, uh, <clears throat> uh, they, they don't go in houses, and mostly they're just off and look. Mm -hmm. But they, they're bad on animals. I mean, they'll tear up chickens, and one was seen carrying a pig under its arm, and mm -hmm. a dog. And, yeah. uh, so I don't want the, the viewer to, to be in fear of these. Uh, like I said, this all happened that I've documented here way back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. We're all, you know. Yeah. And so uh, they need need not think that these things are out there to get them because that's not the way it is. Yeah. Okay. And, and also, I I want them to understand that they're they're temporary physical. They they go back into the other dimension. Okay. That's where we're going right now. You've termed these animals para apes. Yeah. Uh, for the reason you just said, explain that a little bit more. Para means uh, something that you think you know what it is, but it's really something else. You mm -hmm. know. Uh, Parapes, of course, they're they're a dimensional in nature. They're a lot like the UFOs. In fact, they're associated with UFOs. They've been seen in UFOs. And uh, a paraape, uh, we've already discussed that how you can't kill one of them because yeah. they're they're living here. So you think, well, did they come from outer space? Well, I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many things of this nature now that's here. See, we're like blind slugs. We can't, we don't see a lot of what's really around us, what's going on. We've only got so many uh, senses, you know. And there's other things here that we, but uh, an abductee, and I have quite a few of those, they will sense, uh, don't see these things. But uh, ordinarily, uh, so you've, you've called these parrot apes and underneath it they are transitory dimensional beings is what right. is what That's you've right. come down to right. <laughs> when you uh, 
took this theory out to the UFO uh, uh, conference. conference that you went. How did that go over out there? How did they accept this theory? Uh, they were already a group that already knew all this stuff. So they were pretty much yeah. on the same page as you? They were on different categories of the UFO mystery, but this here, they, they knew it was part of it, too. It was part of it. Yeah. Had, had anybody taken this um, direction with the uh, Bigfoot and the alien uh, type thing besides you? Or is oh, yeah, there's, a, there's quite a number. Of, now you take out West. They're, they're, full of, they're full of the sightings and by investigators. Okay. And, and here there's been some good ones in here. And back okay. east. But are there other people that's had the same theory that you had? Is this, a, is yeah. this something that you came they, up they, with, they, or is this something that you've kind of joined in and did some research uh, with another? I decided on my own, but uh, there's a lot of others. It, it's dawned on them, finally, that, you know, that, that that's part of what's going on. They're dealing with something here that, uh, that you can't apprehend, you know. So they more or less just slip back into another dimension? Is that what you were telling mm -hmm. me earlier? They That's almost they just disappear. You, you well, said you had, you had an instance where uh, one was shot and just into a pu uh, light right. that was disappeared. Back in Pennsylvania and this, uh -huh. this was a close shot. It came on her porch with its hands up. Mm -hmm. And she had the shotgun there, of course, and she was full of fear. And when it got about six feet away, why well, she blasted it right in the middle and it was Really? Yeah. Has that been most of the uh, reports that's happened once they shoot them? Well, you said no, that some of them have run away screaming. Some of them, some of them, some of them just disappear uh -huh. into yeah. nowhere. Uh -huh. Why do you think they're here? The UFO mystery is such a vast, complex mystery, if you include it all, mm -hmm. that uh, I'm sure the government's trying to figure it out, and if they can't figure, maybe they have, but I certainly am not. So you really don't know why they're here. They're just. Do no. you think it's accidental that they show up here and then disappear? No, I think it's a deliberate thing with the, it's with a deliberate the UFOs. Thing. Okay, uh, but uh, it's for me to to say that I know why they're here. Yes. Yeah. From just your experience with the alien abduction and all the research you've done over the years, do you think that these creatures are wherever the dimension they come from? Are they the normal? Are they the norm? Or are they an animal like we're looking at them as an animal, or are they the humans as we are here? I don't know what you mean by that. Are they the equivalent in their dimension? Oh. Are they the equivalent of us in ours? See what I'm saying? Here we look at them, we call them a creature or an animal. Yeah. Well, they're not. Don't call them an animal. Okay. Right? Well, if if do they go? Do you think that they go back into their dimension and they would consider us a creature or an animal? Are they the norm in their world? probably consider us, I know the alien intelligence probably consider us a lot of aboriginal low dangerous functioning, people. Low yeah. functioning, right. dangerous people to be right. around. And, uh -huh. Yeah. And the apes is kind of confusing because sometimes they'll act, well, up at Kokomo, where's that at? Right there. The, the man was fishing and this thing was standing way back in, in the twilight and he couldn't see it good and he, he asked it something and then it disappeared then next thing you know he's sitting there and he sees this hand on his shoulder mm -hmm. I mean imagine how he, he looked over in this hairy hand and then he looked down and seen its hairy legs then look up at this towering specter over his head and boy you know and this thing took a quick step backward and took off ran away and this guy was the guy that happened to as a football type he's big he's over six foot he started after it, but he didn't get too close, and it ran down the road. And then got, when it went across the bridge up there, it, he could hear its feet slap on the bridge. Mm -hmm. Then it got across the bridge, and he got up there, and it went into the tall weeds. And pretty soon, this red light flew up from there. Hmm. See, so that's... Apparently, they can be dangerous. We talked about this earlier, I know, but... Um... You never, you, you've had a few instances here where there's been actual physical contact with these animals. Um, picking the man up in a sleeping bag, uh -huh. a, a touch here and there, those things. So you don't think that they're actually dangerous? They're not here for that? No, they're not, they're not on the attack against us, no. More or less, we're, we're on the attack against well, yeah, them. That's where they probably <laughs> think that we're, you know, yeah. very low intelligence. And, uh -huh. uh, okay, I, I, can, I can see that one. Um, can we slip into their dimension, do you think? Hmm? Can we accidentally slip into their dimension? Uh, 
when we pass away and die, we go into another for, form of existence. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think we're with the apes, though. The yeah. apes are probably off on there. I've never had of any uh, uh, part where they're, we passed on and said anything about the apes. Mm -hmm. I don't think okay. apes got anything to do with us. When we, when we talked earlier this week, you were telling me about um, someone that had told you about an alien abduction and they had a hairy friend. Do you remember telling me what? A hairy friend? Do you remember telling me that story? You said that there was a lady, she was abducted. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You remember Very that? Very famous, right? <laughs> tell, tell him about that. Yeah, she, she, uh, she lived over next to Columbus, Ohio, and uh, she got to seeing these, something got her garbage down there, pretty far down towards the, in the bottom, towards the river. And so she thought she'd seen something down there, said, I think I'll leave it something to eat. So she left it some uh, uh, greasy bacon, I think it was. And then, boy, she seen it. it there it was. It was quite a big, big ape-like creature, you know. And, but the thing went wrong with, with her was pretty soon there's, she fed it a couple of times, and pretty soon there's two or three of them show up. So then, and they got so bold, they come up in her yard, killed all of her uh, uh, tall, I don't know what kind of tree she had, but it just burned them up mm -hmm. with these things. And uh, people would come there to her house and watch out the window and see them. And uh, that whole triangle of area there was real quiet, and the animals and everything, all the while these things were there, but of course you couldn't see them some of the time because they didn't always come out in a physical form. Mm -hmm. But uh, one night, this big dome disc craft came down and settled down into the bottoms there. And after that, in the morning it was gone, and after that, that was that was the end of that. The whole area to return to a normal state, and they never seen them anymore. But it's always said the lady who fed Bigfoot. <laughs> Okay, we've got a lot of stuff here as far as things or people making contact and all these type of things. What should you do if you see one? If you come across one and you do see one, you're out in the woods somewhere, you see this, or you're looking out your kitchen window, these people are taking off shooting it. What should you Get do? Get your camera. I'd like to have a photograph of it. <laughs> should you go out there and try and talk nicely to it like you do a dog? Or, you know, what should you do? You leave it alone? Let it mind its own business, you mind yours, or should you go out and investigate? Yeah, well, that'd be the main thing, but don't get out there with it. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't, that doesn't sound like it'd be too dangerous. None of them ever attacked anybody, so. Uh -huh. Well, uh -huh. I, I would like to mention here real quick about Roachdale. That was okay. a famous case there. Uh, there was about 40 people seen that thing over there. Really? And they, they unloaded all at once with I don't know how many shotguns and didn't bother it. Hmm. And uh, what was interesting about that was uh, it, you could walk over mud and never left any tracks. A great big heavy thing. Oh, really? You seen it run across the mud and go out there and there was no tracks. And it, uh, it's, uh, trying to think of what else is strange about that. Uh, it, uh, well, right now it's skip my mind. <laughs> you, I, can't, you, I can't remember. Oh, you've been stuff. doing this a long time. I understand. You can censor that part. Oh, yeah, okay. you'll take care of that. That's no big deal. Yeah. Okay. Any other ones on oh, here? Oh, too? I know now. He, they could see through it sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah. It was I mean, a solid mass. They could see through the thing. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing they are seeing. Yeah. So this is really closely related to the alien abduction and, and mm -hmm. this type of thing. So this all, it all ties together. The kind of rules apply here as it applies to UFOs. And well, you know, I mean, haven't been able to catch one, haven't been able to kill one. You know, they loved it. No carcasses, no nothing. Nothing. I'll tell no. my joke here now. Okay. <laughs> the Colts, the Indianapolis Colts would really love to have one of these because they could put them in as a lineman or quarterback. Think of what a season they'd have. Yeah, they wouldn't have had that 41 to nothing loss, yeah. would they? Of course I joke like that. I don't mean this is a laughing matter. No, no, no. This is this is serious. I can tell that you spent a lot of time, a lot of years uh, studying these things and uh -huh. you know, I'm impressed with your cast here. It's uh, it's impressive. Uh -huh. These big guys, I don't want to run into him, especially if we've got anything like that running around down by the lake or in all town or someplace like that. I don't want to be yeah. out there and run into that guy. Yeah. So, well, I didn't tell you about uh, Waterloo right there. Yeah. Howard Green, he's dead now. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's just right out here. Mm -hmm. 
he got up at night, he was, his leg was hurting him, and he got up at about 3 o'clock and looked out towards his soybean field, and here's this big thing walking in like this, a big, huge thing. I mean, you know what it was. Yeah. There was a red light that illuminated over in the soybean field. So as it w went towards it, when it got close to it, the light turned white, and then everything's gone. So I'm, I'm out on that one. I took photographs of the 30-foot uh, circle that mm -hmm. had burned the soybeans. I showed you that picture yes. of, the, of one of the soybeans and then a good soybean. I can't find a picture of the <laughs> circle on there. I don't know where it's at. And uh, I thought that was pretty interesting there, too, that uh, it wasn't a whole lot happened in it, but, yeah. but he seen well, it. And any little instance is interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, Mr. Worley, I appreciate you coming down and spending some time with us. Yeah. Uh, I've enjoyed it. And I'll tell you what, you know, if this goes over well uh, next month, you've got a lot of other subjects. Yeah, let me uh, get this here. Yeah, let's get this in another time here. If they want to hear some more about it, copy that down. www.adept.com slash Worley slash. I'm working on the MIB yeah. cases now, but when I get them cleared out, I'll, I'm going to go on next with this instead of something else I was going to do. Okay. So I think some people will want to learn some more about this. Yeah, you got the MIB, and if I remember right, you've got the uh, Nordic aliens that you studied a lot yeah. on. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the hooded reptile aliens. I saw listed on one of your. We'll get into that on another show when I get some more information from him. So well, I give you, if you want to do it, and the, and the audience reacts favorably, and everything. I, I'll give you a list of uh, something. Okay, we can about. do that. We're going to get out of here now. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, pair of apes. Don't forget it. Uh, it's a theory Mr. Worley's come up with and some other guys that he's done some research with over the years. Uh, we've had a good time on this one. Thank you again. I really appreciate okay. it. So, thank you. I'll see you later.